Well, talk to us about these, uh, Dr. Robinson. Yeah, we, we actually now have third-hand smoke, believe it or not. I know. And we, so I think we talked about we talked that about last that. time. Yeah, so any level of uh, injury to the lung that's going to cause a chronic inflammation like smoking or, or biomass fuel inhalation, I think we spoke also mm -hmm. about our folks that come to us from Latin America or, or from Central America who need wood or, or coal to heat and, and cook their food, mm -hmm. uh, they're just at risk of having COPD as folks who right. smoke cigarettes. Uh, and I think the idea that irritant uh, exposure leads to chronic inflammation, that chronic inflammation unfortunately will uh, in some patients lead to having COPD or, or the obstruction that we see uh, by doing spirometry. Mm -hmm. Some patients have uh, genetic deficiencies, uh, mm -hmm. so alpha-1. Um, there are some inflammatory cascades that we now can measure that are also deficient um, based on familial risk. Right. Uh, and so those are folks that are a different population, mm -hmm. um, but they all present kind of the same, cough, wee, shortness of breath, productive sputum. Uh, and then unfortunately there's some patients who uh, um, have chronic infection and, and chronic infection due to either old tuberculosis or um, um, airway damage that leads right. to what we call bronchiectasis and those patients also come uh, with some level of COPD. Now as a pulmonologist how much of your job is working just with COPD patients? Uh, it depends on a day for me mm -hmm. um, I, but I'd say when I'm in the office it's probably 70 percent of my day um, okay. and I think the idea that uh, so many folks are affected with COPD uh, means that I'm seeing a large number of patients on a daily basis that, that unfortunately have a diagnosis that requires medication. Have you seen it on the rise in the last couple of years? We have got better at the CDC at uh, finally adding two questions to the robocall that goes around na nationally every year mm -hmm. asking if you have a diagnosis of, of chronic bronchitis or if you've been told by a clinician if you have COPD. Uh, when we finally added those two questions to the, the behavioral risk factor survey we went up in prevalence overnight from right. So roughly about 12 million folks is what we presumed, uh, up to 15 million. Uh, so there are a large amount of folks that are being affected with COPD. And I think we spoke at one point about the length of time it takes for patients to, to get the diagnosis. Uh, so many patients are symptomatic for almost 2.7 years wow. before they get the diagnosis mm -hmm. of COPD. So that's 2.7 years of becoming deconditioned, slowing down. Uh, but that's maybe. only if they don't go to the doctor or is... They've been going to the doctor. And I think the idea, again, for us is that if you've got risk factors, as we uh, uh, displayed right. on the slide, and more importantly, you've got symptoms, then spirometry is necessary yeah. uh, so you can make that formal diagnosis.